Hey folks, this is Paul talking about A Course in Miracles and uh, <clears throat> feeling kind of excited today to talk about the secret of salvation uh, but in particular uh, an insight that I've had about how everything that we do in the ego is an attempt to attack and it takes on many different forms and it looks like, feels like, seems like something else particularly when it seems like you're not the one doing any attacking but if you can realize that you are attacking whenever you are afraid, guilty, unworthy, sick, being hurt by somebody else, a victim, um, sinful, dead <laughs> Anything that you do in the ego, anything short of you being immortal <clears throat> and uh, invulnerable and nothing is affecting you and nothing can hurt you, anything else must be you trying to attack yourself and others. It's, you tr and it's not just about you attacking yourself, it's that you try to come between you and everybody else. You try to come between you and God. Which means that all of those things, the guilt and the sicknesses and everything else, and the death and the unhappiness and unworthiness, it's not just something that you are experiencing in isolation. It's not just about you. It's actually a two-sided sword. It's a double-sided attack where you are normally joined with everyone and you try to separate yourself off. Every time that you attack, you are trying to increase the separation between you and others. It's not just, oh, oh I'm just attacking myself. It's actually that you are attacking yourself and your brothers. It applies to you and the whole sonship at once. And any self-attack is the same thing as attacking God. It's the same thing as you attacking your brothers. It's the same. When your body seems to be sick, and it seems, oh, I'm the one that's sick. That's not true. Sick bodies are accusers. It's, it's a state in which you have attacked yourself and your brother. And it's showing up in your body, but you are attempting to make it show up in their body as well. Um, through your attacking thoughts and that your body becomes sick and contagious and you're trying to infect them <laughs> to, so that the attack is actually something that comes between. So the separation, the separation idea it's not just, though, here I am in isolation in my little bubble and this is stuff that I do to myself. You can't do anything to yourself in isolation. It's always, in all of these scenarios, whether it's you being afraid or hurt or upset or guilty or whatever it is, it's actually a state in which you are trying to, to attack you and others to increase the gap between you and them to emphasize separation. Um, and you may not think that you do that. You think, well, I'm the one that's suffering and I'm the one that's sick and they're not sick and I'm the one that's unhappy and they're all happy. And so it's only happening to me. That's part of the, that's actually part of the victim consciousness that you believe it's only me that's being affected because the ego is all about separation like that. So it's always like, uh, it only applies to someone else and not me, or it only applies to me and nobody else. Both of those viewpoints are victimhood and both of them are not true because everything always applies to everyone. So whether it's that, okay, I'm the one that's suffering, I'm the one that's guilty, I'm the one who's a sinner and an upset and sick and dead and not you, that is an illusion because the ego's trying to make it seem as if something can apply to you that does not apply to others or something can apply to them and not apply to you. 
um, and that's entirely illusion. It's, it's not true. It always applies to you and your brother. So when, when it seems like, oh, poor me, I am the victim, I'm the one who's suffering, you're not suffering, you're the one who did it, you motherfucker. It's denial of the fact that you are actually doing it to you and them. You are trying to, to position yourself as sick and suffering and, and, and damaged and so on in order to accuse them of doing it to you and, and that accusation is attack. You are trying, this is why sick bodies are accusers, you, you make the body take on an image of evidence and proof that you've been damaged and hurt and here's the symptoms to show for it in order to accuse your brother of being the one who put the symptoms there so that he now stands accused as a sinner and you being sick is actually an attack on your brother to try to make him be pulled down and suffer and weakened as well so you don't you never ever really have total isolation from what you're doing your suffering is always an attack on both you and your brother the separation every separation idea is an attempt to come between you and others <clears throat> and it's only because that that separation gap increases you become disassociated you become blocked and in denial and you become unaware of the ways that your private suffering is doing anything at all to anyone else and it all seems like you're behind a wall and everything's about me and it's my victimhood and my suffering that's because you're unconscious and you're having blocks to awareness you don't see how your personal hell is actually simultaneously cutting you off from others by attacking them you're projecting you're going to project your private shit onto them anyway and even if you're not really able to recognize how your personal hell has anything to do with hurting anybody else it is um, it's just that the way that it seems the form that it takes the appearance that it has who seems to be suffering all is illusion that distracts you away from realizing that you're actually <laughs> trying to do something to you and others you're trying to hurt yourself and others you're trying to be sick and make others sick you're trying to be guilty and make others guilty by being guilty like oh I'm guilty and ashamed it's actually a state where you're trying to have a pity party and be guilty and feel sorry for yourself so that you will induce guilt in another person <laughs> and you might think well only the times that I attack ex explicitly seem to attack another person where they seem to get hurt and I don't seem to get hurt that that also means I'm not getting hurt or I could be murderous or hurt something, damage something, break something that seems to be separate from me as if you can sort of isolate all of the effects into the external thing to make the illusion that I'm getting away with murder or getting away with that attack not having, not being, uh, experiencing any of the consequences as if all the consequences are, are separate from me they're the only one that gets to suffer and I get to be innocent and holy and that too is an illusion any time that you try to to sort of put the balance of the attack 
onto another or something external, something not me, that is you, you are in denial again and now you're not realizing or recognizing why when you attack others you are also attacking yourself and you are experiencing consequences. You are getting affected by your attempt to destroy something that's not you or something that's so uh, disassociated from you, some person that you say I want nothing to do with them and I hate them and I'll, I'll have as much space between me and them as possible and have them be the one that suffers and I'll just get away scot-free. You're not ever getting away scot-free. If you make your brother suffer, it's because you are attacking them. If you're attacking them, your mind has attack in it and that attack is going to hurt yourself. You and your brother will suffer together regardless of whether it seems that you are or not. And, and even if you've made it unconscious, even if you're not even seeming to have any effects, you are having effects. You cannot hurt someone and be loving. You cannot be angry with somebody and be peaceful. You cannot um, attack somebody and be happy and joyful. Um, you have to enter into the same as if you try to put them down you also will put yourself down you you go down into the hell with them there's something in the course where it talks about this about how uh, by trying to make plans for your brother to be in hell you put yourself there as well so it's it always applies to both of you this is the golden rule that Anything that's true for you always exactly equally applies to yourself and your brother. So if I'm afraid, I'm trying to also make my brother afraid. If I'm guilty, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> Gosh, triggering some ego now. <coughs> Just as I talk about guilt, if I'm <coughs> if I'm being guilty and I tried to make myself sick to prove that I'm being attacked, that was me attacking you. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, um, it always applies to both. So this is an interesting thing because we're very convinced by the ways that things seem to be different and specific and unique and separate. So you think the, this fear is is confined to me, or that's a, that's guilt, or that's uh, unhappiness, and this is unworthiness, and this is over here, this is sin, and there's some sickness. Not thinking or realizing that they actually are all one thing. It's all ego. It's all attack. Um, no matter how it looks, no matter the dynamics, no matter who's involved, no matter who seems to be being affected, no matter who seems to be getting away with not being affected, uh, no matter the physical effects that happen or who seems to be suffering, it's always one thing that you're doing. Here you are, an immortal being, and there you are, trying to attack. <clears throat> trying to prove that you are attackable and your brother is attackable. Trying to hurt yourself and others. Either you're loving or you're attacking. Either you are strengthening and supporting and healing and uplifting 
or you're trying to put down, attack, destroy, and make dead. Those are kind of the only two things you ever can do. So even though we have this huge vocabulary of all these seemingly different things that we do, whether it's um, I'm feeling guilty or I'm afraid because someone's doing something to me, it's not really different. You're not really... There's always sort of these different balances of who's doing what and, and what the causes are and is it them suffering, is it me suffering. It's always one thing. It's always me attacking or me loving. That's it's kind of like a switch. It's the only thing you can do. Either you're being the effect of God and being his son and being loving and extending his being or you're going into sin. And if you're going into sin, i.e. the authority problem and trying to cause God, make effects, you are attacking. The whole entire ego thought system, the entire world, everything in it, everything everybody does, the world of um, bodies is the world of sin, all of it is attack. The world was made as an attack on God. All of it, every single action and behavior, every reaction, every interaction, it's all forms of attack until it's totally healed and you are in perfect immortality and love. Um, and <clears throat> these illusions of different problems is itself and is itself and a problem because you get you get thinking like if I'm afraid it seems on the surface as though that means somebody else is to blame someone has power over me someone's doing something or saying something and it's causing me and I'm getting effects starting to show up and I'm starting to feel afraid and perceive that it's against my will and I'm being victimized. That is all illusion. That's all bullshit. That's not what's really happening. If I'm becoming afraid, it's because I'm trying to attack. And you might not realize that because the more that you get into victimhood, the more backwards your perception is and you see that instead of I'm causing it's the world is causing me the more that you get deceived by illusions and are in ego and are going towards fear and suffering and sickness and death and everything's getting reversed it really strongly starts to look like you're not uh, the one who's doing anything because really it's that you are causal and you extend God's causality and now you're trying in denial what you're trying to do is you're trying to deny that you cause anything and death is an attempt to, to be in a state where you're pretending that you are totally passive and you don't cause anything at all you've got no willpower you don't have any will to live you you don't you didn't choose it it's the ultimate victimhood and the ultimate sort of state of mind and perception where everything's twisted around and it seems like you're not choosing you're not doing anything you're not the one who initiated it you're not the one who's causing, you didn't want it to happen, you, in fact you want it to stop, you want somebody else to stop it, you want somebody else to be responsible for it. And in that kind of state of mind, in that perceiving, you're very deceived and not realizing that you're actually attacking. And, and the attack that's coming out of you has been so turned around backwards that it seems as if it's the total opposite of you attacking. It seems like it's somebody else attacking. It's the world, it's the food, it's the body, it's the environment, it's the government, whatever it is, that now the causality seems to come this way and that makes you a victim and you then perceive 
as if you sort of from the outside in you perceive that attack is happen happening to you from a separate cause or alien will that isn't you because there's so much disassociation and denial it but really it's indirect attack you are instead of being so obvious about attacking outward you're you're putting it out and turning it around and then putting it back in somewhere along the line you have a wall of denial or block to awareness or backwards perception that makes it seem as if you are not the one who is attacking it's actually a separate you've separated off this piece of your mind so strongly and that you actually perceive it as a separate entity someone else with an alien will is doing it to me and it's really secretly you attacking yourself indirectly so all the ways that the world attacks you is you attacking you in a two-step process pretending that you are not doing anything at all so uh, disassociated and in denial that you're pretending very strongly I'm just an innocent bystander I'm just a victim I didn't ask for this here comes the horrendous attack oh it's horrible it's terrible I wish it would stop but having no real intention of stopping it because that would mean owning up to the fact that you're the one doing it you're doing it to yourself and this is the secret of salvation the secret of salvation is that you're doing it to yourself and I decided to uh, read a little bit here um, from the course <coughs> To uh, clarify that Jesus is very explicit about this and about how there's no exceptions and this is an, an important thing that it, there has to never ever be an exception to the secret of salvation that you're doing this to yourself that you're the one choosing attacking causing otherwise if there was ever an exception someone else has power over you something else causes you something else is keeping you in hell something else has the ability to stop you from choosing to wake up to reality if there's ever an exception to the to the secret of salvation you're stuck in hell with somebody keeping you against your will and and the truth is there is no one nothing in the whole universe that is causing you to stay in hell and suffering it is you choosing it is you causing it is you attacking yourself it is you making your own hell and you are the one responsible for all of it and therefore because you are you can choose again change your mind get some healing get corrected correct your perception back to where you're realizing that you're causing and therefore set yourself free and no one can stop you nothing in the entire universe can keep you bound and you can become free of your own free will and set yourself free from the prison that you made that you are the prison guard keeping yourself locked up um, so it's, it's the secret it's the fact that everything has come from you and that means if you were to decide to change your mind and stop causing all of your suffering all of it including physical health sickness death misery unhappiness unworthiness whatever it is fear and sin and guilt owning up to the fact that you're putting it there and then deciding not to put it there and ending up simply setting yourself free and realizing that there are no other causes in the world there is no cause of death in the world there's nothing in the world with the power to bring oppression to make you ill 
to make you sad or sick or afraid or suffer in any way. There are no causes of death outside of your mind. Your mind, the mind makes this decision as it makes every decision responsible for the condition of the body. The mind is the cause of the body. The mind is the cause of everything that you experience. It's the cause of everything you feel. It's the cause of your physical symptoms. It's the cause of death. It is the cause of the universe. This is what the Course is getting at, that you are the power and the causer and the chooser of your own hell. And if you change your mind and decide to will with God instead, there is literally no power, no causes, no wills, no chains that can keep you locked in hell in any way because you hold the key. You have the key to heaven's gate. You can, you can go into heaven at any time. There's nothing that is holding you down, holding you back, keeping you in, in suffering. Nothing has power over you. You are the Son of God, not even death. There is no death. The Son of God is free. You have power. You who made sickness and death can abolish both. You can abolish hell. You can unmake the universe. This is the, this is the responsibility that you have. You made space-time. You, you, you're dreaming. You're the one who is dreaming this whole world, everything that's happening. Myself is ruler of the universe. What, nothing happens unless I say so. <laughs> Everything comes to me. Nothing comes to me unbidden by myself. It is I who rule my destiny, blah, blah, blah. Course in Miracles, total self-empowerment, realizing that you were perfectly fine in heaven and you are the one who chose to reject God and you're the one who made everything of the ego. You made up all illusions. You made the world. You made sickness. You made death. You decided what sickness would be, and what it would be like, and what it would do. You put the laws of physics in place. You created biology. You made up death and said, yeah, when this certain thing happens, and there's a certain arrangement of this and that, it's going to do this, and then the body will do that, and then we'll call that death. You made it up out of nowhere. <laughs> it has no power over you. If you decide to abolish it, it's gone. It has no ability to stay of its own will because it doesn't have one. There is no alien will. It's you against yourself. It's your power <clears throat> that you've projected and disowned that is now seeming to be an enemy that seems to do things to you against your will when it's secretly it's your unconsciousness. You're actually doing it yourself. And you have to own that power, that responsibility, so that you can realize if I would just stop hurting myself, I will be free forever. If I'll just stop trying to make myself dead, I don't have to die. You, you cannot die unless you choose to do so. No one dies without their own consent. If you don't decide, I'm going to make death happen, it cannot occur. This is what Course is getting at. This is why it's so radical. This is the secret of salvation. Sets you free from hell forever. <sighs> kind of feisty today. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Have a little snack. <laughs> A little magical snack to give me some to to affect me in a positive way. Okay. The secret of salvation. Well, there it is. <clears throat> The 
The secret of salvation is but this, that you are doing this unto yourself. No matter what the form of the attack, this still is true. Whoever takes the role of enemy or an attacker, still is this true. Whatever happens to be the cause of any pain and suffering that you feel, this is still true. Um, so, for example, I'm feeling upset. I'm making myself feel upset. I'm afraid because the doctor's come along and given a horrible diagnosis and I'm going to be, according to them, I'm supposed to be dead, causing me to have reactions of fear. Am I really having reactions of fear because of the doctor or am I attacking the doctor to try to make him go away using fear to separate myself from him to try to emphasize the gap between us to protect myself to create distance between us that's what safety is to the ego and am I really afraid of this thing that the doctor's saying or is it that I'm actually trying to attack in order to defend myself is it's that I am not really afraid I'm attacking I'm doing it to myself I'm making myself fearful I'm putting fear into my experience choosing to become suffering choosing to fear choosing to be victimized choosing to see myself as unfairly treated choosing to see that I am under attack and attackable and that it's happening. It's me believing it. It's my bullshit. I'm the one choosing to believe that I'm being threatened. I'm putting the fear there and I'm doing it because I'm attacking myself. This is to do with um, my attack thoughts or attacking my invulnerability. Fear is an attack thought. Guilt is an attack thought. Sin is an attack thought. Sickness is an attack thought. Death is an attack thought. Unhappiness is an attack thought. Unworthiness is an attack thought. Shame is an attack thought. Uh, sin is an attack thought. Anything that you are doing that is anything less than holy and happy and joyful and loving is an attack. And you are doing it to yourself and you are making it happen and hurting yourself. Jesus says, you cannot be hurt unless you hurt yourself. Which tells you that if you would just stop doing hurting, causing, attacking, and stop pretending that it's not attack, stop pretending that it's fear, stop pretending that you've been victimized, that someone else is doing the attacking, Owning the fact that oh this is another this is me attacking again that this being afraid is me attacking again this me f dreading and and worrying that's me attacking again <laughs> everything in the ego is is spent time spent attacking and if I was to stop that is it true that there is some other attacker is it really true there's a cause of death that is beyond my mind is it really true that my body's becoming sick because of the environment is it really true there is another power another will another mind another cause separate from me out there somewhere that can do something against my will? The answer is no. It seems like it. it. There's tremendous illusions that make it seem and appear as if there are. That you would think, oh, there's um, somebody lets off an atomic bomb. <laughs> How will I not be affected? If you are masterful and perfectly powerful, and nothing can prevail against you, 
neither can an atomic bomb. This is not ridiculous. Jesus talks about how you can be perfectly protected in the section about sickness is the defense against the truth near the bottom. It talks about how there's a protection that you can have when you are using the body only for love and that you can the body can become a symbol of immortality and even if the body could be affected you would not be affected because you're immortal you could just make another body <laughs> as if it had had no effect on you so you are not at the effect of anything in the world because you're not of the world um, there is no cause in the world this is the belief that we have that somewhere out there separate from my will my power my control my ability to make an influence or a difference beyond my mind somewhere beyond the scope of my being that I can't have any power over outside of me separate from me there's another causer a chooser a will that if it decides my fate it can make me suffer against my will and I can't do anything about it and that is bullshit that thing that you believe in that you think is a separate power a separate alien will is part of your mind it's in it's inside your mind but seems to be separate from you because you have a split mind you've disassociated you believe in separation you've attacked yourself you've got a piece of yourself over here and you've got a piece of yourself over there and the part that's over there you don't recognize as you because of the attack between you and you think it's your enemy and it's yourself <laughs> it's your own power that you are afraid of it's your own causality that you're afraid of it's your own will to attack yourself so as instead of you willing wholly outward extending where nothing opposes your will you take a piece of your will and you turn it around you put it out there and you make it do stuff to you and believe that it's not your will <laughs> and it is your will the enemies that you have the the power that you think they have it's yours it's a part of your power that you've projected onto them to disown it and now you're afraid of that power that seems to be separate from you doing stuff not realizing that it's you it's your it's part of your mind that's gone out and seems to be almost separate and it's doing stuff against the will that's going this way because you're willing against yourself you're having a war with yourself self-conflict a self-attack and so you're you're willing in two directions at once and it's a split will and that cancels the power of the will because you're you're now opposing yourself you are your own enemy you are the one that is against you there is no separate external power over you it doesn't exist there is nothing in the world that can bring oppression cause you to be ill make you unhappy or afraid or upset in any way there isn't a cause of death out there or in the body or in the environment or the food or the people or the weapons or the wars there is no cause in the world you're the cause of your death you're the cause of living you are the chooser this is what the course is about that you have the power you're the one that decides because you have free will whether you're gonna suffer or not and if you're suffering it's because you've chosen to do so Jesus is reminding me of uh, I must have made a wrong decision because I'm not at peace I made the decision myself take a look at that because that's actually saying in all circumstances 
at all times, no matter what it is, if I'm suffering in any way, sickness, death, unhappiness, guilt, whatever, fear, I made a decision to do that. I made a decision myself to be afraid. I made the decision to be guilty. I made the decision to be sick. I made the decision to try to suffer and die. I'm the one who's choosing to believe that I am unworthy of God's love in order to try to prevent God from loving me. I'm the one who's trying to be guilty in order to have an excuse and a reason to disown and hide the fact that I wanted to sin. And I'm the one who chose to sin and to try to make sin happen. I wanted to be separate. I, you have to own <laughs> everything that you're doing to yourself. The secret of salvation, you are doing this unto yourself. Uh, I must have made a wrong decision because I'm not at peace. If I'm not at peace in any way, I must have decided I want to not be at peace. I'm going to make myself suffer. And now you're in the state of suffering, recognizing I made the decision myself. But having made a wrong decision, I want to decide otherwise. And I want to decide otherwise because I want to be at peace. Instead of choosing I want to suffer and not be at peace, I'm changing my mind and saying, you know, I don't really like the suffering that I chose. I don't really, I'm not really enjoying this pain and torture. I think I'm going to choose to be free of it. I'm going to choose to be happy again. I'm going to choose not to have this. I'm going to choose to be healed and whole and free of this suffering. Whatever it is, sickness, death, murder, guilt, fear, whatever. Because you have that power. This is the secret that you have the choice to choose either I choose to suffer or I choose not to suffer ever again. I choose never again to die ever again. I choose immortality. You have that freedom <laughs> to choose that and no one can stop you. I don't have to worry about the consequences of my wrong decision because the Holy Spirit will undo the consequences if I'll let him. So I chose to make suffering, I chose to make sickness, I chose to make unhappiness and guilt and shame and unworthiness and whatever. I put it there, I believed in it, I wanted it, I chose it. I made it happen. I created it. But I don't have to worry about having done that because by my choosing and my willingness, my little willingness to want to be peaceful instead, to choose God again, I'm choosing the Holy Spirit again, and He will undo all of the shit that I made up, he can undo my sickness, my physical symptoms, my depression, my anxiety, my guilt, my fears, uh, my sense of sin and unworthiness, whatever it is, my, all of my symptoms, all of my everything, all of the ego shit that I chose and put there myself, the Holy Spirit can undo it for you whereby you don't really even know how to undo this shit. If you, make, if you make a choice that results in a terrible disease that you put there to defend yourself against the truth, you don't necessarily know how the cells operate and how the chemistry is functioning and what the interactions are of the molecules and all this stuff. 
you don't have that kind of knowledge to be able to sort of fix it. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit does know everything to be able to heal everything that you've made, including the world, including the planet, including the universe, to undo the separation. He knows how. He knows how to heal cancer. He knows how to reverse AIDS. He knows how to, to completely restore the heart after a heart attack. He knows how to remove paralysis. He knows how to undo stroke and heart disease and liver disease and bone marrow deficiency and autoimmune diseases and everything. Everything that you could ever make in your wrong decision, you don't have to worry about it because the Holy Spirit knows how to undo it and He can and He will if you will let Him. <laughs> he will undo the consequences of my wrong decision if I will let Him. I choose to let Him by allowing Him to choose for God for me what I found is that it's it's kind of more like I allow him to heal me by inviting him in by having a little willingness which means I'm willing in the direction of God I'm willing to be mistaken I'm willing to admit that I made a wrong decision I'm willing to own up to the truth the secret of salvation I'm willing to forgive myself I'm willing to not believe what I've been believing, anything that's moving you toward the truth is willingness and is an invitation because you're saying, okay, Holy Spirit, I want to be closer to you, closer to God, closer to health and happiness. I want to be more awake and more at peace. So by making a little effort in that direction, that is offering permission to the Holy Spirit saying I am I will that I want to be at peace I I choose in that direction and that is opening the door and giving permission for him to intervene on your behalf with a miracle to undo the consequences of your wrong deciding to remove the symptoms of your self-attack to heal the body physically, to uh, heal your upset feelings, to heal your mind of its confusion and its um, delusions, denials. If you're willing, as much as you're willing to trust that the Holy Spirit can do that for you, He will come and enter into your mind, your feelings, your body and do stuff and actually heal and undo all of the crap that you've made for you. He knows how to do it but it takes development of trust, willingness to surrender, willingness to forgive, willingness to be mistaken, to let go, to, um, to relax and allow and invite him in and let him do stuff trusting that he is doing it for your best good and he's not going to hurt you and so on not being afraid he can come in and heal you so the secret of salvation is telling you that you're the one that chose everything that you're experiencing that you have the freedom still to choose again you can make another choice and choose authentically and honestly owning up to the, the choice the choosing that you are responsible for that you put your sickness there for a reason you wanted it to defend you you made yourself afraid to try to make something go away because you might notice that when you're in fear it's always about I want this to stop, I want it to go away, I wish it wasn't happening. That's all attack, trying to make something be destroyed. You're trying to get rid of something with fear. 
Um, so fear is an attack, and when you choose not to attack, you're moving towards the truth. When you choose to surrender your ego fight, <clears throat> you're moving toward truth. And at the slightest movement towards the truth, you are opening the door to the Holy Spirit and inviting him to heal you. And he can do stuff that you cannot do on your own. He can do a supernatural healing on your physical body, on your emotions, on your mind, on your perceiving, on your thoughts. He can stop ego thinking if you ask him to. <clears throat> There's nothing that he cannot do. So you've got to gradually learn to trust that he can do that and let him do that. Allow him, invite him, get, ask him to come into you and do it. And if you do that, he will. Um, he's totally willing to do so. He's there to help. He's there to heal. His whole function is healing. And he wants to heal you and your body so that you can symbolize healing and not attack in the world. Be a symbol of harmlessness and uh, proof that you have not hurt yourself or your body. You would not react at all to figures in a dream that you knew you were dreaming. Let them be as hateful and as vicious as they may, they could have no effect on you unless you fail to recognize it's your dream. This single lesson learned will set you free from suffering, whatever form it takes. So you're the dreamer, the causer, the chooser, the wanter, the person who is deciding, I'm going to make suffering. I'm going to make myself unhappy on purpose. I want to be unhappy. <laughs> we literally do this and you make the dream stuff that you say you don't want but you must want it if it's there because you're putting it there so if you're making it be there um, but you're forgetting or you're not aware of or you're out of touch with the secret of salvation that you are the cause you will then think that it is the cause of you and now it will seem as though your dream is dreaming you the world you made the dream world seems to be turning around it's an effect of you you've caused it it's an effect and nothing but an effect but by disowning the causality of it and the choosing of it the one being the person who's dreaming it putting it there with your mind you reverse cause and effect and try to claim that you are not the cause of it Therefore, you are the effect of it, and it is the cause. And then you give causality to the dream that you're dreaming. You give it power over you. You believe that it's causing you, and now you start suffering. Because now, if it is the cause, you are the effect. And effects start to manifest in your body, in your mind, in your feelings. You start having reactions. All reactions of the ego are responses to I believe that that thing out there should cause this effect to occur based on the hierarchy of illusions a severe cause should produce a severe effect a slight cause will have a slight effect on me and it correlates so whatever you believe the power that that thing has over you to that degree you will manifest effects in you and you'll think that it's caused by the world 
the dream that you're having, the stuff out there, the people, but your mind is still the cause of it. It's always the cause of it. So your mind actually puts the effects into your body that you're claiming are being caused by an external thing. You are putting them there. Somebody comes along and kicks you in the leg and your leg has a bruise. Your mind is putting a bruise on the leg to try to prove that that motherfucker did it to you. You're trying to accuse them of your sin against your leg. You have power over the body. The mind must be stronger than the body. Every miracle demonstrates this. So if you are getting into your miracle mindedness and having power over it, you would remove the bruise knowing that you put it there because you dreamed of it and through that miracle demonstration exonerate your brother and the dream of accusing it of causing you it's your dream you put it there you must have put the bruise there one way or another if you've dreamed of an attacker and the attackers come along and kicked you in the leg you kicked yourself in the leg with this puppet that you put in the world <laughs> and hired or uh, consented and agreed with or even more literally literally made a weapon to use against yourself and then inflicted it upon yourself with no one else involved it's the kind of recognition you got to have if you're realizing you're the dreamer of the dream. If you recognize you're the dreamer of the dream, the single lesson will set you free from all suffering. If you can get into the awareness, I'm the one causing. I must have chosen it. I'm responsible. I am the source of the dream. I am the one who's doing the attacking. If I would simply choose not to cause attacks, not attack myself, either sort of directly or indirectly or in any way, I would be free from suffering. My dream would not have the ability to attack me because what happens is your perception of it changes and you realize that this dream is just sort of a self-contained bubble of illusions and it can only attack within itself and you are outside of the dream you're the dreamer of the dream you're beyond the dream when you think the dream causes you that puts you your sense of self into the inside bubble of the dream and makes it seem as if the dream is doing stuff to this part of the dream that you've identified with, the body, the hero of the dream, that you now think the world is now attacking you as the body, when you are dreaming of the body and the attacker and the environment and the situation and all the things that happen. <laughs> so if you can get yourself sort of out of the dream I awake and stop uh, believing that it's not coming from you and you're not choosing it the secret of the uh, myself is rule of the universe nothing comes to me unbidden by myself everything happens that I chose because I'm the dreamer I'm the one making it happen and if I would choose just to stop hurting myself I will be free from suffering forever because I'm the only one who is hurting myself and pretending that I can be hurt. <clears throat> this is the only lesson. Regardless of there being 365 lessons in the workbook and a huge text in the manual and blah blah blah, life lessons, curriculums, blah blah blah, there is one lesson to learn. In A Course in Miracles, there is one single truth. This one secret of salvation is all you need 
to wake up totally. It's the central lesson uh, whereby you're recognizing I am cause. I chose to make hell. I now choose not to make hell anymore and accept atonement and be immortal. That is all. <clears throat> but it may take multiple forms of different seeming attacks, <clears throat> different challenges, different people, different environments, different seeming problems that look like they are separate issues, but they're not. It's all this one thing. It's all this one, I'm trying to disown my power, I'm trying to not be the cause, I'm trying to pretend that I'm hurtable, I'm, I just have cause and effect back to front. All of it is to do with cause and effect. I am the cause. The world is the effect. If to any degree, in any way, I believe the world is the cause and I'm the effect, that produces every single form of suffering in the entire universe. Sickness, fear, guilt, whatever it is, is all just another way that it shows up that I have my perception back to front because I'm perceiving from the outside in. I think that causes are coming at me from the world and so I think my eyes, it's almost like your eyeballs are out there in the world looking towards this as if you are now causing this way at this body <laughs> and seeing that the cause is now coming the hit this way it's an indirect attack the holy spirit will repeat this one inclusive lesson of deliverance until it has been learned regardless of the form of suffering that brings you pain Whatever hurt you bring to him, he will make answer with this very simple truth. For this one answer takes away the cause of every form of sorrow and pain. The form affects his answer not at all, for he will teach you but the single cause of all of them. No matter what the form, and you will understand that miracles reflect this simple statement. I have done this thing, and it is this that I would undo. <clears throat> so, there's basically, there's this one lesson, there's this one, one dynamic. And the authority problem, the separation, the entire ego thought system, the universe, the whole world, every problem you've ever known about is all just a form of cause and effect reversal. God is the cause of you, you are the effect of God, and you start believing that you are the cause of God, and God is the effect of you. And that is backwards thinking, it's, it's what produces perception from the outside in, it is magical thinking, it is level confusion, it is self-attack, it is what makes you think that your dream is causing you and making effects in you, it is the, the starting point of all victimhood and suffering and sickness and death. Death is the total reversal of cause and effect. So all you have to do is put them back in their proper place as it says, I have, I have done this thing. And it's this thing that I would undo, and by undoing it, I will be free of it forever, and I will never have to suffer. The secret of salvation, that's all you need. It's like this one thing, this one secret. You get this, and you apply it, and you live in it, and you correct your perceptions and your beliefs so that you're never believing that anything has power over you, you're never being a victim, you're never uh, falling for the illusion that you are separately suffering, you're never buying the deceit 
that someone else is wrong but not me or I'm wrong but nobody else is or the sufferings over there not over here or uh, I am they're the one that's been attacked not me or I'm attacking myself and they're not attacking themselves so I'm the little helpless victim all of that has to be undone by you with willingness with the help of the Holy Spirit so that you can be free from suffering and that's what the whole course is about every lesson every every idea it's all pointing in that same direction this one lesson the Holy Spirit will repeat this one inclusive lesson of deliverance until it's been learned regardless of the form of suffering that brings you pain uh, he will teach you that uh, the forms don't mean anything they're just different forms of the same issue bring then all forms of suffering to him who knows that every one is like the rest he sees no differences where none exist and he would teach you how each one is caused by you how am I causing fear how am I causing guilt why am I attacking when I'm fearing why when I'm worrying am I trying to undermine the person that I'm worried about why when I'm guilty am I trying to induce guilt in the other person to get them to feel sorry for me enough that they will let me off my guilt why it's all you doing causing choosing making doing it to yourself <clears throat> uh, None has a different cause from all the rest because you are the only cause and all of them are easily undone by a, by a single lesson truly learned. Salvation. This is what you want to get out of hell. You want salvation to be saved from yourself attack. Um, salvation is a secret that you have kept but from yourself. So you've actually hidden this secret from yourself so that you would not be free of suffering so that you could keep blaming people so that you could keep having denial so that you can keep sickness so that you can keep justifying death to try to prove that you're not immortal you you didn't want this secret to be exposed to have to own up to the freedom and the power that you have to cause either your own hell or heaven. You either extend heaven or you block heaven and try to express something opposite. Um, salvation is a secret you've kept from yourself. The universe proclaims it so. The entire world you made is trying to proclaim that it is the cause of you and that you didn't um, cause it. Temptation. But to its witnesses you pay no heed at all, for they attest that the thing that you do not want to know. They seem to keep it secret from you, uh, yet you need but learn you choose but not to listen and not to see. You sort of you don't want to admit to what you're doing to yourself and every way that you think something's affecting me something's hurting me someone's threatening me something's causing me to be sick something's making me something's I'm upset because of it's that's all bullshit illusion covering up the fact that you are attacking them and yourself you are trying to separate you and others by going into fear and suffering and guilt and sickness uh, how differently will you perceive the world when this is recognized <laughs> when you forgive the world your guilt that you've tried to blame on them it's you making the guilt you will be free of it 
Its innocence does not demand your guilt, i.e. in order for the world to be innocent you don't have to be the guilty one because there's a quality. If the world is innocent, so are you. Nor does your guiltlessness rest on its sins. The other flipped reverse of that, that I get to be innocent and the world is guilty, that's also ego. This is the obvious, a secret kept from no one but yourself, and it is this that, that has maintained you separate from the world. So as you do all this victim-y stuff, you cut yourself off from your brothers, from the rest of existence. <clears throat> and kept your brother separate from you. Now need you but to learn that both of you are innocent or guilty. This is the golden rule. It, everything always applies to you and others equally. If I'm innocent, you must be innocent. If I'm guilty, I believe that you're also guilty. You can never have a situation where I'm innocent and finding you guilty. In order to find you guilty, <clears throat> I've got to be guilty too. I have to believe in guilt in order to find you guilty. If I believe in guilt, I have to believe guilt is true. And it's true of me, and it's true of you. So, it's the ego's deceptions that suggest <clears throat> you can get away with murder, this murderous idea, uh, what is not love is murder, that if it can somehow be, can, if I can somehow separate myself from the effects of what I'm causing, have somebody else receive the effects and not me, or have me receive the effects and not someone else, then I am somehow free from blame for the sin. I'm not the one who attacked or somebody's attacked but somebody hasn't. There's an imbalance and this imbalance, this inequality is the whole ego thought system is based on this inequality. It's a denial of the golden rule that everything always applies to you and the whole sonship. Um, <clears throat> So, the secret of salvation requires and entails you owning up to what you are, what you're doing. And when your when your emphasis and your mind gets onto what someone else is doing, and there's a decrease in your focusing on what you're doing you become victim-y, you become threatened, you go into fear, you start to to accuse people of sin. When you get this imbalance, this uh, it's not me, it's you, I'm not doing anything, you're doing it all. That's, that's instant victimhood. You're the one attacking, I'm not attacking, I'm the one that's scared, I'm the one that's a victim. Not true, I must be attacking. If I'm scared, I'm making myself scared. <clears throat> and when, when you're guilty, you believe that you should be hurt. You believe you deserve punishment. And it's you. You think that you're guilty and should suffer because you agree that it's true of you. It's true that I'm guilty. I actually am guilty. And if that's true, you will not allow yourself to be forgiven and you will uh, not object to punishment. You will allow yourself to be hurt. Not only will you allow it, you agree with it, you'll also want it because you'll think it's justified. I, if I'm sinful and guilty, I do deserve to suffer. Um, and then you, all by yourself, are now starting to have it in for yourself. 
you now believe that you should suffer and you will start to make yourself suffer and you'll start seeking out ways to be hurt you'll start making yourself attacked you'll start loathing yourself hating yourself being against yourself finding yourself unworthy to continue self-attack and it and that will threaten you and make you scared the source of all your fear is yourself it is your own attempt to destroy yourself that makes you scared <laughs> and <clears throat> That's suicidal. It is suicidal to believe that you're guilty because you're going to start trying to hurt yourself more than you already have. Just uh, even believing that you've even sinned is self-attack. Trying to find yourself guilty. It's a continuation. <clears throat> They say the wages of sin is death. Just even by even accusing yourself of having even sinned. You're saying, look at me, I'm not innocent. I'm evil. I've, I've done something. I'm capable of bad things. I'm not a good person. I don't deserve love and forgiveness. It's a, it's a self-attack. And then you go into guilt and you're attacking yourself even more. And then you go into fear and you're attacking yourself even more. And then you start punishing yourself, and then it seems as though your causality's gone and projected, so now it seems like the world is doing the attacking, and that's punishing you, and you don't seem to want it, but you're still attacking yourself. You're hurting yourself through other people, and then eventually it ends up in death, where you have committed suicide. Every single death is suicide it is self-chosen this is part of the secret of salvation recognizing that you have power over death you get to decide whether or not death happens you are the cause of it happening if it does no one else nothing else not the body the body does not cause death um, the world does not cause death, the environment does not cause death. Your mind is the only cause of everything. Your mind is the only chooser of what happens and nothing can happen beyond your choosing. If you imagine that this world doesn't exist and before the separation it didn't exist, how is it possible that there's anything in the world that can occur on its own unless someone sitting in heaven chooses to make all of it happen. Someone somewhere sitting there on a cloud imagining and dreaming making an entire world and nothing can exist in that world unless that mind puts it there. There isn't another thing putting the world there. It doesn't exist on its own free will. It doesn't remain of its own free will. The mind has to maintain it. Jesus says you maintain the world in your mind with your thoughts. You're the one choosing it. <laughs> Heaven and earth are both in your mind. Um, so if the world was not here and the only way stuff has shown up is because a dreamer has put it there and it is the only cause of everything that seems to exist in the world. There is no other cause. It's you. And if you decide not to put it there and you undo it and you reverse it and you cancel it and you don't believe in it anymore and it disappears it doesn't have any power to stay of its own free will. You just are done with it and it goes, it just vanishes into nothing because you're the one who has the power to choose everything. You're the one making it happen. 
If you choose that there will be no death, there will be no death. If you choose that this seemingly dead person shall not stay in death, they will resurrect and get up and stand up. This is the power of the mind, the power of being a miracle worker. <laughs> that you can heal the sick and raise the dead because you have you made sickness and death and can abolish them. You can reverse the world. You can undo the universe. You're the one that's dreaming. <laughs> You're the one that's making it happen. So if you don't choose to make a wrong decision, where you make yourself suffer and you choose the other way, you can be free from death. <laughs> you never have to suffer again against your will. There is no such thing as against your will. Only you are ever the one who is against your will. When you have a split mind, you're willing out and you're willing in and they're budding heads and you're willing against yourself and you're in conflict and you're hurting yourself you're trying to attack yourself if you would stop doing that and only will and extend the love of God you uh, are taking off the table that attacker there now is no opposition to your own will you're whole minded your will is whole you're causing uh, without any opposition. Imagine the power that you have when you can cause and there's nothing to resist your causing. There's nothing, there's no other will, no other power, no other strength, no other solidity or reality that, that is doing anything to prevent the effects that you're causing. Unopposed will, a uh, will that has no enemy, a power that doesn't need to have power over anyone because there is no other power. The single one power of God. Power without opposition. That is your natural birthright. Um, So whenever you're doing anything, feeling anything, <clears throat> experiencing anything, being attacked, being afraid, worrying, feeling guilty and ashamed, having grief, loss, guilt, unhappiness, unpeace, whatever it is, anything, ego, anything less than perfect, happiness and joy, reframe whatever it is that's going on as it's coming from me. I'm choosing. I must be attacking if I'm not happy. If I'm terrified, I am attacking. If I'm having absolutely the worst day of my life, I'm making it shit. If, I, <laughs> if everything's going to hell and people are dying left, right and center, I am causing and choosing everything I experience. I'm, if I'm upset and I'm horrified, it's not that I'm horrified because of what they're doing, I'm horrified in order to try to attack them. I'm causing, always causing, causing, causing. I'm the cause, I'm the cause. <laughs> it's coming from me. And in particular, all the, all the forms of it that seem the other way round are the strongest delusions that you believe, especially that fear gets backwards, especially uh, attack, punishment, death happening to you against your will, something in the world making you dead, is the absolute reversal of the truth, the secret of salvation, that thing is not causing death. You are making death happen. You're the cause of all of your suffering. So if you choose otherwise and you want to be at peace, Holy Spirit's there and he's going to help you to 
undo those consequences that you mistakenly chose. You must have been mistaken because nobody in their right mind would ever choose to suffer. And so he will help you to choose again and to choose what God would choose for you. Happiness, love, peace, health, uh, invulnerability. And by your willingness to choose that again and let the Holy Spirit heal you, you can be lifted up out of your nightmare, out of your hell, out of your suffering, into immortality, into salvation, to be saved from hell, saved from fear. I had a thing yesterday, just as a personal thing, <clears throat> where a guy called on the phone and he, I knew immediately that he was going to deliver bad news and I suddenly had a fear reaction, my whole body's lit up with anxiety because <laughs> of, of the circumstances I knew that if he was calling at all it meant there was bad news <laughs> and so my belief in this situation uh, produced in me fear because of how I was looking at it and believing that that's what it meant. So my body got all scaredy and my heart's getting faster and my blood pressure's going up and I'm starting to feel hot and anxious, anxiety's increasing and it suddenly popped into my head, I'm attacking. <laughs> Look at me go, I am attacking right now. It seemed like I was being made to be afraid. It seemed like things were happening to me and causing me and threatening me, making me upset. And as soon as I thought, this is me attacking. I'm attacking myself and I'm attacking this person. All the, all the fear just sort of melted. And within like five or 10 seconds, I felt calm. I was like, what? I was really surprised as to why, why am I calm right now? I was, I was scared just a minute ago. <laughs> this doesn't seem normal. It doesn't seem, it seems like I should be more upset. <laughs> seems like I should be suffering more. Uh, but I was just feeling just calm because all the fear left because the illusion of the fear, the illusion of the attack, the illusion of an external cause was completely dissolved by me owning, I'm doing the attacking, I'm causing, I'm making this, I'm choosing, I'm actually using fear to try to make that person go away. I'm trying to hurt them with fear. I'm using fear as a weapon. and. <laughs> That's what you're really doing underneath the illusion of what seems to be happening. So then by owning that, recognizing that, it dismantles the illusion. Illusions recognized must disappear. I saw through the, the appearance of a reason to be afraid and saw that in fact, that wasn't why I was afraid. I was afraid because of me. I was wanting to be afraid to, to deliberately attack and push away, get rid of it, make it go away. And upon admitting that, owning it, uh, acknowledging it, all that illusion of, of threat and danger just melted. And I just felt calm and like, this really works. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> found some salvation because of my um, not buying into my own illusions and choosing again and aligning myself with the facts the the most uh, blatant truth the, the most honest uh, actual what am I actually doing in contrast to being a mortal spirit that's loving, if I'm not being a mortal spirit that's loving, I'm actually attacking. I'm, I'm trying to make something be destroyed and go away. 
either through belief in sin or guilt or fear or whatever and by admitting to it if you admit to something you are allowing the truth access because admitting does mean allowing something to come uh, like when you get admitted to the movie theater it means that you've been allowed to be admitted and allowed to go in truth comes in when you admit to the truth and own up to the to what you're doing to yourself so I had to realize I'm a I'm feeling afraid because I'm attacking myself I'm terrifying myself with self-attack and trying to use this terror to manage the situation and to make that person stop to end them which is murderous to try to get rid of the problem as soon as I admitted to it Hmm. I feel calm. This doesn't seem like a big problem. I don't even seem upset. <laughs> it really works. <clears throat> I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> because I felt excited about this because it is a secret to salvation. It sets you free and it gives you freedom. It's a tool. It, it's... Uh, and being able to recognize that all of these ego things are attack, self-attack, not just fear, but even if I'm being guilty, I'm trying to attack. If I'm having sickness, I'm trying to attack. If I'm believing that I've sinned and that I'm unworthy, I'm actually attacking. Unworthiness is bullshit. No one is really unworthy. God finds everybody worthy. So if you feel unworthy, you're actually attacking God's evaluation of you that you're worthy you're trying to prevent him from loving you and you're trying to claim and cower and shrink down and pretend oh don't love me because I'm not worthy enough it's bullshit it's really that you're trying to deny your worthiness you're trying to pretend not to be worthy and that is an attack on you you're attacking your worthiness you are 100% worthy of God's love at all times unconditionally so when you when you feel oh I sinned and I am guilty and I'm not worthy of love don't love me because I'm a sinner that's all totally bullshit you're you're actually maintaining and keeping the sin and the guilt and the unworthiness and the fear of punishment holding it there and saying oh just it's don't mind me I'm just not worthy because you're trying to not let it go you want it you want to be unworthy it means that you have you're choosing to be unworthy instead of that you are allowing yourself to admit you are worthy you do deserve love and God is loving you right now and he's totally happy with you he doesn't have any upset with you whatsoever so all this other stuff is your own bullshit <laughs> there is no such thing as true real fear guilt sin, unworthiness, sickness or death. All of it is fake, all of it is a lie and you have to own up to that in order to be free of it. If you're suffering, you're bullshitting. <laughs> if you're a victim, you're hurting yourself. You cannot be hurt unless you hurt yourself. You are free of death forever. The Son of God is free I'll see you soon. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye.